So Crystal Palace Park, my local. I love this place. Now, it's a place I come whenever the weather is way too bad for cycling. I still want a little bit of exercise. Now, as I said today, it is cold and it's icy. So it is way too dangerous to be out on a bike. That looks pretty bad. Check this out. I wouldn't fly down here. Look at all of that ice on the road. So brace yourself for this. I've decided to go running. Now I know running is a bit of a taboo word for pretty much every cyclist out there. I mean, we've all had a bad experience or two over the years. I think we're gonna switch things up, try things a little bit different. However, the only thing we've resulted in is a week's worth of doms and feeling sorry for ourselves with our sore legs. However, today I'm gonna to flatten that theory and I'm gonna show you just how great running is for your all-round cycling. Crystal Palace Park Run start line. Now, admittedly, it is not a Saturday today, so it's a darn sight quieter here than normal. I mean, start of the weekend right here, there's normally about three or 400 people lining up for the 5K run. Now, there's a reason I've come to the park to do this run today, rather than run on the road. Now, as I said, the road is a dangerous place, so if it's too dangerous to ride a bike today because of the ice, then equally, it is way too dangerous to run on the road as well. I mean, you do not want to be slipping over and falling on your ass. So the great thing about the park is because you're running on off-road tracks, the water doesn't form in the same way that it creates sheet ice for you to fall over on. So there's still loads and loads of grip and you can get a workout at the same time. I do not know what an ice cream van is doing here today. Mental! Now the first thing I want to talk about really before we carry on any further with this run is the very thing which makes running one of the most fearful activities for pretty much any cyclist out there. Now that is the awfully painful legs that we get after having been for one. Now, this is more scientifically known as DOMS, standing for delayed onset muscle soreness. And there's a reason for this. So in cycling, our muscles are used to contracting concentrically, which means when the muscle is shortening and to load. With running, however, running your muscles are contracting eccentrically, which means the load is placed when the muscle is lengthening. And this change, polar opposite change, in the way your muscles are working, is the very reason we get DOMS. Now DOMS is not necessarily something you're guaranteed to have. If you start off small and build yourself up, chances are you might not get anything at all. It's just your muscles getting used to it. If however, like I've done at times, and you bite off more than you can chew, then as I said, yeah, you can expect to not be walking for a week. Now, another really important thing to talk about is the fact that cycling is obviously a non-weight bearing exercise. Now, you might be thinking, what on earth does that have to do with improving my performance on the bike? I mean, all I care about is cycling. I want to be quicker on the bike, but it's not so much about how it improves you. It's the fact that too much of it can contribute to the fact that you'll reduce your bone density. Now, that is not a good thing. Too low bone density that will make you more susceptible to breaks if you fall off your bike. Now, it doesn't just have to be running to combat bone density. Anything which involves walking, moving about in ways that you wouldn't normally do on a bike. So that could be running, that could be hiking, mountaineering, playing football, basketball, you name it. Anything which is freedom of movement and different to just sitting on a saddle, moving your legs, turning them in circles, is gonna be a really, really good thing to help balance out your body. So other than benefiting bone density, which is just one benefit to cross training, it doesn't matter what you do, like I said, whether it be running, climbing, playing football, you name it, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that it's also great for our mental health. It helps us stay motivated, driven, and passionate for the thing which we want most, and that is winning races. Now, it's something that I used to do quite a lot of. Like I say, any opportunity, when the weather's bad like it is today, go out for a little run, go out for a little hike, 
not a problem off season, mid season break, it kept me motivated for longer. So if it's not something that you've normally done or considered doing to have another activity, then it might well be worth investigating after this vlog. Now I've got to stick to tradition and I did say that no amount of exercise was ever complete without a coffee. So one flat white, don't mind if I do, love it. Now I've got a pretty special sign off for you guys. Remember what I said about how cross training can be absolutely anything. I mean admittedly today we are running, but running after a while can get a little bit boring. So a couple of weeks ago, I went to Valencia to climb a mountain. So I've created this little montage for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. If you did, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of it. And also if you do cross training yourself already, maybe what you do, what keeps you motivated and keeps you fresh. Climbing up a waterfall down. How sick is this? Now this is why I absolutely love hiking. Because you forget about everything and you see such cool stuff. up the waterfall. That sounds like a horrible innuendo, doesn't it? That was tough, but absolutely drenched. So, unfortunately for all of those of you who hated my hair before, you're gonna hate it even more now, because I've now man bun. Now this was done purely for practical reasons, for safety, obviously. So we've come out the uh, come out of the shower now, the rather large waterfall, which was far higher than I ever expected it to be. I've also put the man bun away now, so uh, you guys can open your eyes. So I think we are fairly close to the top of the climb now, and I feel like I've had a real workout. And my arms are hurting, my legs are hurting, and it kind of feels like I've been to the gym. Now that is essentially what it is, and why I absolutely love doing this sort of thing over the winter. Because psychologically it keeps you super fresh, keeps you motivated, and all of the exercises which you'll do on a hike like this, you can guarantee you'll do them in the gym as well. Whether that be leg presses, bicep curls, pull-ups, you name it, on a hike like this you'll do all of it. And at the same time, it's beautiful, and psychologically, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere with nobody around, just peace and quiet. So here we go. Check this out for an echo. Cycling Weekly! So 
right, that is it. We're done for this week. Park run complete, 5K in the bag. Not particularly quickly, may I add. I mean, obviously, I was nowhere near breaking my park run PB. I mean, I did uh, stop half around to talk to you guys, so that is gonna be my excuse. I was just slow. I know this week was a little bit different. I mean, I got my running shoes on rather than my Lycra, but in the spirit of cross training, like I've been talking about today, I hope it has been great and you found it refreshing and motivating. So if you enjoyed this vlog, please give it a like and hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'll look forward to seeing you guys soon.